My PhD deals with the artificial reproduction in eel. The stocks have been seen to decrease, although then in recent years they are coming a bit up again, but uh, in general they are uh, decreasing. So we want to be able to, be, to become independent of this and, and breed them in, in captivity. So my project has been around this whole process of artificial reproduction and I've been dealing with all the conditions when we harvest uh, eggs and, uh, and sperm from, from eels. Actually, it's a process that has been attempted for many, many years since the 1930s to breed eel in, in captivity. But uh, the eel is like a, a quite special species. That's also why I'm so uh, fascinated by it. I was elected in our eel group to, to go to a gas of sea cruise in March this year. And uh, I was really, really pleased about that because it's an awesome chance to see the, the real conditions for the European eel. It is so that we never caught European eel eggs in the Sargasso Sea, so we don't know how they are supposed to look in the nature. But we know that the eggs is actually going to almost double size in the eels, and the sperm cells vigorously swimming when it, it touches this uh, salt water. But this process often failed in many of our attempts to artificially fertilize these eggs. So I was intrigued by this and fascinated by the apparently irrational pattern of this and then tried to find some logic explanation for this. And one of them was uh, the salinity and salt. And one of the things I'm really happy about in my PhD is that we actually identified a series of salts that, that were actually capable of, of creating this and egg size that were presumably the species specific size of European eel. That was one of the nice achievements, but uh, we also see that, that once we have them hatching these larvae, they have, we have a huge mortality. So that's why I looked at the bacteria effects on the late embryology in the egg and after it's hatched, and we there saw clearly that bacteria could actually buy more than halving the hatch percent and could increase the survival up to yeah, several hundred percent uh, when we deprive or precluded the bacteria from the environment of, of rearing. So the next step of this uh, is obviously um, trying to find a suitable uh, rearing environment that mimics the Sargasso Sea and have a lot of heterotropic, like uh, slow growing bacteria that can suppress any uh, opportunistic pathogenic species of bacteria. Mm -hmm.